Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Police are searching for three suspects they believe responsible for stabbing a man in the stomach early this morning. We have the details of the crime and the latest on that victim's condition. The nation is on high alert as Joe Biden's inauguration nears with thousands of National Guard troops patrolling the streets. We have the latest on all the security measures ahead of the inauguration. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 36 degrees to start off the weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a few moments. Good morning, 6 o'clock this Saturday, January 16th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Sarah Costa just down the hall. Sarah, how's your weekend? It, it's good. You know, I spent some time outside uh, yesterday. It was beautiful. This morning was another one of those driving with your fingertips on the <laughs> steering wheel. I didn't get driving gloves because when you get in in your car, and it, it's, the wheel is so cold, Sarah Spivey, 36 degrees out there. Yeah, you know, guys, we are starting off actually even colder than 36. It's 33 degrees right now reporting at the airport, so a cold start around San Antonio, and it's even colder outside of the city center. Look up in Kerrville, 25 degrees, 25 in Hondo, 29, Yavaldi, Del Rio, well below freezing at 30 degrees this morning. Carrizo Springs at 30 and Kennedy down to 28. But today is going to be one of those days where you start off with the jacket and you end up with the short sleeves because temperatures are going to be really pleasant this afternoon. We're going to warm up nicely to 65 degrees and thank goodness those winds are not going to be as breezy as they were yesterday. We'll have a variable wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour throughout the day. Now it is an extended weekend, a three day weekend for many folks and it's going to look great all weekend long. Tomorrow's going to be a nice day, just a couple of degrees warmer and by Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We're going to be seeing a few more clouds out there, but temperatures still near 70 degrees. Now it's just after Monday that we're going to see our rain chances start to increase and we need the rain. So coming up, we've got a lot to cover, including those rain chances in a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one man in critical condition after being stabbed downtown and now police are searching for up to three suspects. Investigators tell us around 215 this morning, a man got into a fight with three others in a parking lot near St. Mary's and Convent. That man was stabbed in the stomach. He was actually found near his vehicle. Right now, police working to figure out what exactly happened and who was responsible. The only lead we're aware of as of right now is that the suspects took off in a dark colored vehicle. The scene is now clear after an hours long standoff on the north side between an aggravated robbery suspect and the police. It started around three o'clock yesterday in the area of Churchill Estates. Police say the suspect, a man in his 30s, had a warrant out for his arrest. And when officers spotted him earlier, he fled the scene and barricaded himself inside his apartment. Officers called in negotiators and SWAT to assist in negotiations. Two other people were at the apartment when the standoff started. Both have been detained. As of 10 last night, the scene began to clear. We are waiting to hear more on this incident. We'll bring you the latest on air and online. Now to an update on the pandemic here at home this morning, more and more cases coming to light. City health officials reporting more than 2,800 new cases here in Bear County. We are now seeing more than 2,000 cases a day on our seven day rolling average. Six more people have died from the virus in the last 24 hours. But for the fourth night in a row, another dip in our hospitals. 1,387 COVID-19 patients are in our local hospitals. 403 of them in the ICU, 243 of them are on ventilators. Now to the latest in D.C. The nation is on high alert with President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration just four days away. Security is at an unprecedented level with fences, razor wire and members of the National Guard surrounding the U.S. Capitol. Across the country, at least 10 states have activated National Guard troops to protect their capital cities. ABC's Trevor Alt has more on the scene in Washington. This morning, thousands of National Guard troops are patrolling the streets ahead of President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration Wednesday. The nation's capital on high alert with checkpoints and barricades throughout the city. On Friday, the Secretary of the Interior officially closing the areas in the National Mall and more than 25,000 members of the National Guard expected to be in place by next week. Some of them speaking to ABC's Martha Raddatz about last week's deadly attack on the Capitol. It's definitely a concern, however, um... Um, you know, our troops are prepped and ready to go. We train for this kind of thing, um, whether it's our own tactics that are being used against us or foreign tactics that we have nothing, no knowledge about. 
And the FBI is now warning about possible new threats from domestic violent extremists. Among the FBI's top concerns for Inauguration Day, the substantial threat of improvised explosive devices. Sources tell ABC News an inauguration rehearsal planned by the Biden team Sunday has been postponed. The president-elect says he's confident he'll be safe. Do you feel safe on Wednesday based on the intelligence that you've seen? Yes. And as for President Trump, sources tell ABC he'll depart Washington the morning of January 20th, hours before President-elect Joe Biden is sworn in. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, President Donald Trump has not congratulated President-elect Biden, but the vice president did call Kamala Harris on Thursday. In their first conversation since the debate, Mike Pence congratulated Vice President-elect Harris and offered his belated assistance. Pence and his wife Karen may invite Vice President-elect Harris and her husband Doug over to the vice presidential residence before the inauguration. However, due to security threats, those plans are not firm yet. Vice President does Vice President Pence does plan to attend Wednesday's inauguration. Acting Defense Secretary Christopher Miller is saying he cannot wait to leave the job. He told reporters Thursday on his way back from a trip to several states. Now, Miller was actually responding to a question about the F-35 Joint Strike fighter jet. The F-35 program has been widely criticized for its $1 trillion price tag, which is the most expensive weapons program in history. In another striking comment, the Pentagon chief complimented Russia for, quote, using a lot of irregular warfare concepts. End quote. Miller has only been acting defense secretary for two months now. The 13th and last federal death row inmate of the current administration has been executed. Dustin John Higgs was put to death early this morning. Higgs was executed for his role in arranging the kidnapping and murders of three young Maryland women back in 1996. The Trump administration's restart of federal executions in July of 2009 has been controversial. President-elect Joe Biden has made a pledge to abolish the federal death penalty. Higgs' execution was carried out despite an appeal to delay due to his client's COVID diagnosis. And the FDA is warning 10 e-cigarette companies they have 15 working days to comply with new rules. The agency requires vaping products to submit to a scientific evaluation before they can be sold. The deadline for submitting that review was September 9th, and the 10 companies, they all missed it. If they can't meet these requirements, their products could be pulled. The FDA enacted the rule in an effort to curb teen vaping and to make sure the products help adults quit smoking. Time now, just about 608, 36 degrees out. Well, have you been working from home? Do you qualify for a home office tax deduction? Hmm. Still ahead, we tell you everything you need to know about it. And it is never too early for a dessert. It's true. Mm. Next on GMSA, we have a preview of today's Texas Eats, David Elder, talking about a new cheesecake shop. Those cheesecakes are to die for. They are so, <laughs> so delicious. All right, 36 degrees out there on this super crisp morning out there. Sarah Spivey will let us know how long this weather will stick around for and have our weekend forecast when we come back. Max. What's up, Sarah? Hey. Hey. What's what? today? <laughs> <laughs> today is Saturday. What does that mean, Sarah? It means it's Texas Eats Day, Max. Do you want to keep reading or just going to? Well, I was just, I, it was your thing. And I well, was I'm so excited. excited. Uh, Got to say, talked to Elder last night. Can confirm he will be here later this morning. Very exciting. So he's going to be bringing food. But before we get to that, he's actually bringing in ramen. I was told like 13 pounds of ramen. What? Yeah. It's a whole thing. Either way. Let's take a sneak peek at a cheesecake shop that he checked out. Joining us now to talk a little bit more about the history of the bake shop out here is Victor Charisma. And you're going to be talking to us about the name of the cheesecake spot, which is Laika. Yeah. So who's Laika and why name the shop after? So Laika was the first uh, creature from Earth uh, to orbit the Earth in a space. Uh, it was a dog from Moscow. Uh, before we send humans to space, uh, we had to send animals first to, to see how, how it affects us. Unfortunately, the human that's just how it goes. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, but uh, it is a piece of uh, history of, of Eastern Europe, and that's where we're from. So we wanted to incorporate a little bit of it into our store, too. 
Uh, for people who need an option like a sugar-free or low sugar, do you have an option for them? We actually, you're right in time because we just uh, wanted to announce it today that we started making the sugar-free and gluten-free desserts too. Wow. So right now on the display you can see the um, sugar-free New York with a raspberry topping, with a raspberry sugar-free jam on top. And thank you so much for showing us, but now, I mean, it is finally time. We've seen them all. It's time to eat. Yay. And I'm super, yes, we're gonna eat some cheesecake. Now I need to know more about Laika the space dog. I want to do like a whole book report on her. It was a girl and she was on the streets of Russia. I'm reading all about it right now. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Sarah, you've actually had some of these cheesecakes. Oh my gosh, they are so, so, so good. Absolutely delicious. Yeah, he brought in some of those little cheesecakes for us a couple weeks ago. They're so good. You know what? Find some way to keep yourself warm though this morning because look at these temperatures out there this morning. Dipping to near freezing around the Alamo City. So it's officially 33 degrees at the airport, uh, but it's 31 in Holotus. 28 down at Stinson uh, and 30 degrees in Bulverde. You can see that it's also very cold up in Comfort where it's 27 degrees, 30 in Bandera, 29 in Tarpley and 25 in Hondo. So a very cold start to our day, but we are going to be able to warm up really nicely today. One thing that you'll notice is that it is not as breezy as it was yesterday, and that's some good news. It was very, very windy yesterday. Winds today are going to be variable. You know, they'll start off from the north and gradually turn to the south later on today at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Uh, and we've got very dry air in place. Dew points are in the teens and in the 20s. And again, this is going to be the factor that's going to allow us to warm up really quickly today. Uh, the dry air in place, ample sunshine all day long. And so all of us are going to start off freezing and then eventually in the afternoon get up uh, to into the 60s. Out west where Del Rio Eagle Pass temperatures will be closer to 70 degrees around San Antonio 65 for the high temperature, 66 in the, uh, for the high in Pleasanton, 64 in Kerrville and 64 in New Braunfels. Now a quick view of the national view here and it's pretty quiet on the west coast, but uh, across parts of the Midwest and the New England area, there's a lot of snow going around a big upper level low pressure system. This is the same system that made us so windy yesterday. If you're a fan of football and you watch the uh, two of the playoff games today, one in Green Bay and the other one in Buffalo, they're going to be snow games. So it's going to be pretty cold out, out there. But for us here in San Antonio, a beautiful three day weekend for us. It's going to be pretty quiet all the way through Monday. A few more clouds on Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, but then after that, we're actually going to see a weather pattern change starting on Tuesday, scattered showers and even a few storms are going to be possible as a big upper level low swings some Pacific moisture our way and then that upper level low is going to meander closer to San Antonio uh, through about Thursday. So Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we're all going to have a chance for some uh, scattered showers and even a few storms before that system moves off by Friday. So looking at rain chances over the next seven days, again, scattered showers and a few storms are possible Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And when all is said and done, not every location is going to get uh, some water widespread rain. However, we are in some places going to see up to about an inch of rain. Uh, so again, today is going to be a beautiful day, sunny and 50 degrees at 10, 59 at noon, pleasant in the afternoon, 65 for the high, and we'll have variable winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. It'll be chilly in the evening, and we'll see a few more clouds, especially tomorrow morning, but temperatures only a few degrees warmer. And then on Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, high temperature near 70 degrees. Scattered showers and a few storms are going to be possible Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday before we see our rain chances come to an end on Friday. Fantastic, Sarah. Thank you so much. And yeah, you talked about the NFL games today. So glad it's going to be a nice day. Plan to go to a local establishment, sit outside with the TV. Root on the uh, the Packers. Sorry, Rams. Yeah. I'll be asleep by the second game. I'm not even going to lie about it. It's late. I go yeah. to sleep early. There yeah. you go. All right, 617, 33 degrees, Sarah? Yep, 33 degrees. 33 degrees. All right, a woman in Canada taking the snowman game to the next level. Look how cute those are. We have our story ahead. And are you working from home and wondering if you could qualify for a home office tax deduction? Well, just ahead, we're going to tell you the pros and the cons. Take a look at some of these lotto numbers. Pick three, two, nine, five, fireball four, daily four, three, eight, five, four, fireball 
zero. And your cash five, two, seven, 15, 19, 23. Mega millions, three, 11, 12, 38, 43. Big number 15, mega pyre four. Good luck, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, the coronavirus pandemic has forced millions of working Americans out of their offices and into their homes. So if you've been working from home, you may be wondering if you qualify for a home office tax deduction. Well, Eric Hernandez explains what you need to know. Hello. No, it's on an as needed basis. 42% of the workforce is now working where they live. Besides no commute, another perk a possible tax break. If you're an employee at a company, meaning you receive a W-2, you are ineligible. Only those who are self-employed can apply. There are two main qualifications. You must use a portion of your home exclusively and regularly for your work, and your home must be your principal place of business. However, it may be a red flag for auditors. One of the expenses that you can deduct for a home office, if you own the house, is depreciation on the house. If you decide to make a claim, the IRS offers a simplified option. The 2020 rate is $5 per square foot with a maximum of 300 square feet. So if your office is 200 square feet, that would be $1,000. The traditional method involves figuring out the percentage of your home that's devoted to business use. You can deduct a portion of direct expenses. Certain businesses such as daycares may have different qualifications for a home office deduction. These are complicated tax issues, so be sure to check with your tax advisor. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Time now is 622, 36 degrees out. Well, during this pandemic, we have seen many artistic creations, but what about a collection of polar bear sculptures? Mm. That story is next on GMSA. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. It's what a lot of people do when they have a lot of snow in their yard. Not so much in South Texas, but they build a snowman. I wouldn't know, I didn't grow up around snow. But one Canadian woman took that time-honored winter tradition and ran with it, so just take a look. This is Venora Bennett and her snow bears. Hmm. You can see a couple of them play fighting. There's a baby bear and there's one climbing a Aww. tree. Venora says she got the idea to build the, po the polar bear sculptures from a picture she saw, a pair of them online. Now over a week's time, she's built more than a dozen. This is so impressive. I don't know, I don't know why, but I'm so encapsulated by it. So the collection now named after the street she lives on, the Bears on Barrington. She says her reason to keep it going, simple, it puts a smile on everyone else's face. And that's true, I saw it, I smiled. What about what you, if sir? they're melting? Like, what if, like, the bear holding the tree starts to melt? Like, what so I know that, Sarah, you grew up in South Texas, but yeah. this is Canada. Oh. Okay. Um, they have a very long winter. It, 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 We're in the middle of stay? January. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, anyway, 36 now, 627 this morning. In our next half hour, we'll tell you why today is the perfect day to do nothing. Perfect. Oh, I perfect. can't wait. <laughs> And President-elect Joe Biden detailing how his administration will take over the vaccine rollout. We have the details next. Good morning and happy Saturday, 6.30 this morning, January 16th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Sarah Costa, I know you are not a fan of any temperatures under 40 degrees, so how was it this morning? Oh, very cold. You know, I... I sometimes when I'm thinking about it, I will go and start my car about five to 10 minutes before I actually get in. Cause wow. I, you know, but this morning was not one of those mornings. It was one of those, Ugh, it's really cold. I just have to deal with it. And the, what is it? The steering wheel so cold you gotta. Or, or I do the sleeves over Ooh. and I, yeah. Smart, but well, Sarah Spivey tells us it's gonna be beautiful. Well, it is gonna be beautiful. We're gonna warm up today, but uh, Sarah, don't worry. These temperatures are actually the coldest we're going to be over the next several days because slowly mornings are going to get warmer and afternoons will be comfortable. So just got to get through this morning and it's a cold morning. It's 25 degrees in Hondo. It's 25 in Tarpley. It's 30 in Holotus, 33 degrees at the airport right now, 34 in Pleasanton, uh, 28 at Stinson and 23 in Bulverde. So we do have a cold morning, uh, especially if you live outside of the city center. Temperatures are well below freezing, but in today's weather headlines, uh, we're going to be warming up today. Steady warm up into the 60s, so it's going to be nice. And then throughout this entire extended weekend, we're going to have pleasant and dry 
dry weather. Temperatures only a little bit warmer than today for the remainder of the weekend. But we do have to talk about rain chances, and I'm actually happy about that because, as you know, drought conditions exist around San Antonio, so it's nice to see some rain chances in our future. I'll tell you which days of the upcoming week have the best chance to see some rain in San Antonio. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, arson investigators are working to figure out what sparked a fire that ended in $100,000 of damages. This was the scene just after two this morning in the 3400 block of West Commerce. Firefighters tell us when they arrived, they found a vacant home was completely taken over by flames. The home sustained heavy damage and is considered a total loss. Luckily, no injuries have been reported. And a 17 year old girl is in the hospital this morning after being shot at a gas station on the city's southeast side. This all happened around 10 last night on WW White. Police tell us that the young girl and the suspect got into an argument at the gas station. That's when the victim actually tried to leave. Police say the suspect in her 20s then shot the teen. That victim shot in the leg, taken to the hospital. Police still searching for that suspect. Child related unsafe sleep deaths go up in the cold winter months, says the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. They're warning families with babies under one year old to be extra careful when placing babies down for sleep and naps. Use the ABCs of safe sleep. Place baby A lone to sleep and on their B back in a crib, well C crib. They say some families want to snuggle with their babies because of the cold weather but that's dangerous for babies. Remove all blankets, pillows, and toys from their cribs. Covering the baby with too many blankets could also lead to suffocation. They can move that blanket. They can kind of slowly rise up uh, onto their mouth and it increases the chances uh, where carbon monoxide can build up. So my recommendation would be to, to probably go with a sleep sack um, instead of you know, leaving the child swaddled in the blanket for extended period of time. Since December 1st, the state has investigated 31 unsafe sleep deaths. 12 of those are from the Region 8 area, which is where we live. Metro Health is distributing 9,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine on Monday at the Alamo Dome. However, the city is only setting up appointments for 2,000 slots every day. Registration is full for Monday, but this morning the city is opening up 2,000 more slots for Tuesday, and that is starting from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or until the slots are full. A reminder that the site, there are two ways to register. You can make an appointment by visiting the website or call 3-1 and selecting option eight. Again, if you get a busy signal, that means all operators are busy and you should just keep trying. And this morning, there will also be appointments available at the WellMed clinics on the west and south side of town. The Alicia Trevino Lopez Sr. One Stop Center off of Culebra and Elvira Cisneros Senior Community Activity Center off Southwest Military Drive will have appointments for their own 9,000 dose shipment. Appointments can be made by phone beginning at 8 in the morning. That number on your screen, 833-968-1745. And the CDC says more than 12 million doses of the vaccine had been administered in the United States. The number of recipients is lower since more than a million people have received both shots. Seven million of the doses are from Pfizer and BioNTech and the other are from Moderna. Well, President-elect Joe Biden detailing how his administration will take over the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Now, all of this is happening while the Trump administration faces new questions about their promise to release second doses from a reserve stockpile that doesn't seem to exist. CNN's Meredith Wood reports. The vaccine rollout in the United States has been a dismal failure thus far. President-elect Joe Biden pledging to vaccinate more Americans, establish more vaccination sites, and to ramp up the supply of COVID-19 vaccine doses while detailing his effort to fix the Trump administration's rollout of the vaccines. It's something officials around the country have criticized after a seemingly failed promise that a reserve supply of second doses would be released this week. We can now ship all of the doses that had been held in physical reserve with second doses 
being supplied. At the time of the announcement, many of those doses had already been released, according to a senior Trump administration official. All, all the governors, the entire country was, was, was lied to. It was a slap in the face. While the official acknowledged the country won't see a sudden surge in distribution numbers, they said the reserve is being replenished with new production. With coronavirus deaths in the U.S. topping more than 390,000 Friday, getting shots into arms is a high priority. Biden's hoping to make doses to those eligible available in pharmacies and address vaccine hesitancy specifically in minority communities. People who have not always been treated with dignity and honesty they deserve by the federal government and the scientific community throughout our history. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. Well, San Antonio is known as the city with the largest march for Martin Luther King Jr. While the pandemic is keeping crowds from coming together, it is not stopping the city from celebrating the honor of Dr. King's dream. That's why Monday celebration will go virtual. There were several days of filming scheduled to create a video for Monday celebration. It's all an effort to encourage residents to safely participate in Dr. King's legacy. You can watch the virtual celebration on the city's TVSA channel at 10 a.m. on Monday. And speaking of the MLK Commission, we have the chair of the commission, Renee Watson, coming on Leading SA tomorrow morning. So if you have any questions, uh, we're going to have that tomorrow, 8 a.m. All right, 638, 36 degrees out. Well, from movies to a makeup line and a Netflix show, 25 years after her death, we still can't get enough of Selena. Still ahead, the details of a new podcast called Anything for Selena. And if today you don't feel like doing anything, you have a pretty good reason to do just that. It is National Nothing Day. We explain next. Doing nothing sounds amazing when it's so cold outside. 36 degrees out there. Will things heat up? How long will this cold weather stick around for? Sarah Spivey will explain when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. It is time to talk history, Sarah Costa. Experts believe a cave drawing of a pig is at least 45,000 years old. This is cool. That would make the oldest surviving depiction of an animal. So go ahead and take a look. Archaeologists found it on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi. I hope I said that right. Painted in red orchard in limestone caves. They think it shows the animal watching two other pigs in a fight or an interaction. Mm. The caves appear to be a treasure trove of human history. Fascinating. The cave art of a hunting scene dating back 43,900 years ago was also found there in late 2019. The same team of archaeologists in 2014 found human hand stencils, which were dated to 40,000 years ago. This stuff is amazing. It's a great drawing, too. All right, today is perfect to do nothing. <laughs> January 16th is National Nothing Day. According to nationalcalendarday.com, a columnist proposed National Nothing Day in 1972. And it has been observed annually since 1973. The day was created to give Americans one national day when they can just sit around without honoring everything. So what do you guys plan on doing on National Nothing Day? Well, I'm working, so. <laughs> <laughs> We've already ruined it. Yeah, yeah we got I'm up doing way too early today. for National <laughs> Nothing Day. <laughs> Absolutely, but you know what? We are starting to see the first light of the day out there. A gorgeous start to our day, but it is cold, but if you're staying inside, it, it's going to warm up so quickly that you, you wouldn't even have really noticed the cold start to the day. Uh, there's Venus also rising with the sun. Pretty neat to see that early this morning. 33 degrees out there. Winds are calm right now in San Antonio International Airport, but elsewhere they're light and variable. What a change. Just 24 hours ago, we were seeing gusty winds of up to 30 to 35 miles per hour. So it's nice to see that those winds have calmed down. Unfortunately, we're going to have to see how those winds affected our mountain cedar count later on this morning. Probably it's not going to look too good. Yesterday it was high uh, and today it's probably going to be high as well. Dew points are in the teens, so it is very dry out there. Here's a look at some of the morning temperatures locally uh, around the metro area. Well below freezing in Bulverde where it's 29, 30 degrees in Holotus, 30 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 23 degrees is the cold spot on the map near Kerrville. So a hard freeze up I-10 toward Comfort and Kerrville, 30 in Bandera, 30 
25 in Tarpley, 25 in Hondo, and it's just at near to freezing in Pleasanton this morning. 30 in Del Rio, 27 in Uvalde, and 30 in Carrizo Springs. A very cold morning, but because of the dry atmosphere, because of the chapstick weather with dew points in the teens and 20s, we are going to warm up really nicely. Uh, sunshine loves dry air, and it really warms up the dry air very quickly. So take a look at today's forecast. We're in the low 30s right now, but even by just 10 in just three hours from now, we're going to already be up about 15 to 20 degrees to 50 degrees at noon. It'll be close to 60 in the afternoon, 65 for the high temperature uh, and then temperatures will cool down really quickly in the evening as well. And then winds will be variable today, uh, meaning that they're going to change direction. Uh, so uh, starting off with the wind from the north and then gradually seeing those winds turn around to the south at about five to 10 miles per hour. Again, a Pleasant change from yesterday when we were dealing with the very breezy conditions on the satellite and radar a bit quiet across the central plains, but there is a big snowstorm across parts of the Midwest, the Appalachian Mountains and uh, New England area. So as Max was mentioning earlier, those two uh, football games that are happening, one in Green Bay and one in Buffalo, those are going to be fun to watch on the television because you'll be able to see some snow uh, out there. Again, that's a big upper level low. This is the same system that made us really windy yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, but looking ahead, we're going to have a quiet weather pattern for the next few days. In San Antonio, it should stay nice and dry and quiet through Monday, the extended weekend. But then by Tuesday, we'll see a couple of changes. A trough of low pressure is going to swing uh, a chance for some showers and a few storms on Tuesday here in San Antonio. And then this big upper level low is going to swing some Pacific moisture and energy our way. So that will carry a chance for scattered showers and storms through Thursday. And when all is said and done. Uh, the heaviest of the rain will be near the Texarkana area, but in parts around San Antonio, we could see up to an inch of beneficial rainfall over the next seven days. Again, the better chance for rain Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. The next three days are going to be fairly quiet as we enjoy the weekend. Tomorrow, just a few degrees warmer than today and a few more clouds on Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, but uh, temperatures will be a little warmer as well, near 70 degrees. Look at those morning lows. So this morning we've been freezing, but by by the middle of the week, our morning lows are only going to be in the 50s. So temperatures out there right now are probably the coldest will be in the next seven days. Fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah Coast, are you happy to hear that? I'm so happy. I'm tired of covering my plan. <laughs> yeah, no freezes in San Antonio uh, for the next seven days after this morning. Very good. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 647, 36 degrees out. Well, even 25 years after her death, we still can't get enough of Selena and her legacy. Next, we're hearing from the creator and host of a Selena podcast. Good morning and welcome back from the Selena movie, the Max Selena makeup line and Netflix series. Even 25 years after her death, we still can't get enough of Selena. So why is that and what cultural impacts did she have on the Latina community? Well, a new podcast by NPR Boston, Anything for Selena, does a deep dive into the influence of Selena's life and legacy. I had the opportunity to talk with the creator and host of the podcast, and she tells me what we can expect from it and why she created it. Maria Garcia, who grew up on both sides of the Mexico border, her, says she struggled with her cultural identity as a young girl. Like many like many people from the border um i felt the sort of cool in both places and like in both places like half of me was missing but then she discovered selena and her life was forever changed it's like this whole new possibility of being because selena was herself on both sides of the border it's why garcia who is the senior editor of the arts and culture team at npr boston created her anything for selena podcast it's a podcast that examines the depth of Selena's legacy and her impact on the Latino community. This podcast is a culmination of sort of this lifelong quest to understand why she's been such a cornerstone in my life, but also in the culture and to really do her legacy justice. I mean, we go deep on her impact, on her cultural impact in a, in a way that I really believe like has never been done before. She says Selena was uncompromisingly herself and everything about her, whether she chose it or not, people have assigned meaning to her, her hoops, the texture of her hair, her brown skin, sort of the, the, the 
rhinestones and like the working class Mexican American aesthetic and sort of the the red lips, the pronounced sort of pronouncing her features rather than hiding them. They were all sort of symbols that one could ascend in American society that you could make it without giving parts of yourself that made you you without compromising your roots. The nine half hour episodes cover several areas of Selena's impact from body politics and the ideal beauty standard. For example, one episode is all about the history of big butts in the United States to analysis of Selena as a cultural symbol. Garcia says she paired these topics with rigorous fact finding journalism and her personal story. Like ultimately, like it's a personal story of me as a woman trying to figure out where I belong in this country and Selena being this vessel to understand all of these things about race and identity and belonging in America. So I listened to the first two episodes. NPR does phenomenal podcasts and this one is, is excellent. It's actually trending on the podcast list right now. So if you're a Selena fan, um, I really recommend it. It's for, it's actually doesn't talk about, you know, Selena's life. Like, you know, we, we know her life story. It just talks about those cultural impacts and she really nails it. It's very, very good. Fascinating. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 654, 36 degrees out. Let's take a look at birthdays. This is Lily. Oh, so cute. Happy birthday, Lily. She is five years old. And we have Rio. Aw. Who is, oh my gosh, this is the <laughs> cutest thing. He's two years old. Happy birthday, Rio. I didn't know we were doing dog birthdays. He has cufflinks on. Oh my gosh, that is Mike, amazing. Mike Osterhage-esque. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you want to send your birthday pictures in, send them to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to ksatdeals.com. This item is already one of our most popular, a new one-year Sam's Club membership. This yearly membership is typically $45, but not today. It's only $28.88, and you get this for free, the Sam's Club Seasoned Rotisserie Chicken and the eight-count gourmet cupcakes. Now, there are some important details and steps that you'll need to follow. After your KSAT Deals purchase, you'll get a confirmation email to redeem your purchase. Use the link to finalize your membership enter your information and activate your membership watch for your confirmation email and once you've done this you can pick up your membership card at the nearest sam's club now be sure to read the email confirmation and sign up now to start saving lots of money the case at deals price on this 28.88 head over to caseatdeals.com for this one and many more In the news you need to know before you go, a man in critical condition after being stabbed downtown. Right now, police searching for up to three suspects. Now, investigators tell us around 2.15 this morning, a man got into a fight with three men in a parking lot near St. Mary's and Convent. That man was stabbed in the stomach. He was actually found near his vehicle. Right now, police working to figure out what exactly happened and who was responsible. The only lead we are aware of as of this morning is that the suspects took off in a dark colored vehicle. Arson investigators are working to figure out what sparked a fire that then ended in $100,000 of damages. This was the scene just after 2 this morning, the 3400 block of West Commerce. Firefighters tell us when they arrived, they found a vacant home completely engulfed in flames. The home sustained heavy damage and is considered a total loss. Luckily, no injuries have been reported. It's cold out there. Temperatures are in the 20s and in the 30s around San Antonio, but quickly today we're going to warm up. In fact, in the afternoon, it'll be 65 degrees, sunny with low humidity and variable winds. Tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day as well, as well as Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday for the extended weekend. And then after that, we introduce rain chances into the forecast Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Scattered showers and storms are going to be possible. All right, thank you, Sarah. We're going to take about an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA, a house catching fire twice in a 24-hour period. One of those times, a 12-year-old was inside. We have the latest from investigators. Plus, everything you need to know about COVID-19 vaccines right here in Bear County. The phone number to call to reserve a slot this morning. 
And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, a gorgeous start to your morning. It's pretty out there, but it's also cold. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this morning, Saturday, January 16th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Still really cold out there, Sarah, but at least we got a gorgeous sun shot there. It's pretty outside, Sarah, but it went down a degree. <laughs> We we're actually seeing temperatures rise. Uh, we were at 33 degrees this morning and now it's 35 uh, all because of the sun. So let's take a look at that sunrise, uh, seeing the Venus rise with the sun as well this morning. A very beautiful shot and, and the sun is going to help us warm up quite a bit today. Even though we're in the 30s now by the afternoon, we'll be well into the 60s. Here's a look at those temperatures. Uh, neighborhood view 31 in Helotus, so below freezing in Helotus and up on the higher elevations 30 at Port to say 28 at Stinson, 28 at Bernie Stage uh, Airfield, 24 in Comfort and a cold 24 degrees in Kerrville. But like I said, we're going to be warming up nicely. Perhaps you want to go for a run or a walk with the family. Uh, this morning temperatures will be mainly in the 40s for most of the morning, 40s and 50s. And then in the afternoon we'll be at 65 degrees. So a beautiful forecast to get outside and enjoy some weather, not only today, but throughout this extended weekend. Tomorrow's going to be nice, just a couple of degrees warmer and for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We're going to have a nice day as well. A few more clouds and temperatures closer to 70 degrees, but just after the three day weekend, we're going to see our rain chances tick up. So we need the rain. So coming up, I'll detail when we can expect some rain in San Antonio, potentially how much rain we could see as well. Thank you, Sarah. New to our studio this morning, a mother and son left without a home this morning after their house caught fire twice in one day. So this was a scene, the property in the 200 block of Goodwin fire crews on the scene telling us the first fire started around sat seven yesterday evening. A 12 year old boy was home alone inside. Crews put it out quickly. They turned off the electricity just to be safe. Then a little before 1230 this morning, that house caught fire again in a different area. Fortunately, no one was inside at that time. Arson was called out because officials on the scene tell us it seemed like the fire was started deliberately. Uh, damage are, uh, damages are estimated around $80,000. Right now, no injuries reported. Also new this morning, police are searching for up to three suspects after a man was stabbed downtown. Investigators tell us around 2.15 this morning, a man got into a fight with three other men in a parking lot near St. Mary's and Convent. That man was stabbed in the stomach and was found near his vehicle. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Right now, police are working to figure out what exactly happened and who is responsible. The only lead that police are aware of as of right now is that the suspects took off in a dark colored vehicle. Well, we begin our pandemic coverage this morning with the latest numbers in our area in the last 24 hours. Bear, Bear County recording more than 2,800 new positive tests. That brings us to more than 2,000 cases a day. For our seven day rolling average, six more people have died in just the last 24 hours. 1,387 COVID-19 patients are in our local hospitals, 403 of them in the ICU, 243 of them on ventilators. When it comes to the vaccine rollout, we want to give you all the distribution information you need. So first off is WellMed. Just a few minutes ago at 8 a.m., the phone lines opened up for 9,000 vaccine slots at two clinics. The west side location is on Alicia Trevino Lopez Sr. One Stop Center off of Culebra Road. The south side location is the Elvira Cisneros Senior Community Activity Center off of Southwest Military Drive. Appointments can be made only by phone and that number, just take a look at your screen right now if you want to call it. It's live and it's 833-968-1745. Again, that number is for the WellMed appointments taking calls that have opened officially at 8 this morning and they're going to be open till 8 p.m. and they're going to have them daily until appointments are filled. You can get, if you get an invalid call, it's just that the call center is busy. You can keep calling until your call is answered. Meanwhile, Metro Health also distributing 9,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine starting on Monday at the Alamo Dome. 
For this site, you can make an appointment by visiting the city's website or calling 311, selecting option 8. However, the city is only setting up appointments for 2,000 slots every day. For example, there's going to be 2,000 on Monday, 2,000 on Tuesday, so on and so forth. Again, if you get a busy signal, that means that all operators are busy. You should just keep calling. And these are the people who are currently eligible to get the vaccines, the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine. Phase 1A, healthcare workers and nursing home residents, and Phase 1B, people 65 years or older and people 16 years and older with at least one chronic medical condition. Those conditions are such as cancer, heart disease, heart condition, or pregnancy. For those who have already received the Pfizer vaccine at the Alamo Dome, Metro Health is starting to schedule appointments for the second dose. Those who got their first dose Wednesday will get a phone call from someone at Metro Health. If you miss that call or want to schedule the appointment yourself, you can call the same 311 number and select option 8. You can also send an email to the address on your screen. Well, we know this is a lot of information to take in, so if you want to read more about the vaccines, you can do so right now on ksat.com. We have everything you need to know, including the full list of medical conditions required for the vaccine eligibility. You can also find a link to the city's website to schedule an appointment along with all of our vaccine coverage so far. Again, just head to ksat.com. A lot of us were happy to leave the year 2020 behind, but a brand new year doesn't mean a clean slate, especially when it comes to COVID. Now, we've all been living with the reality of this pandemic for 10 months now, and it was the topic of this week's episode of KSAT Explains. Myra Arthur stepping into the breakdown booth, telling us a little bit more about why she thought this was such an important topic to cover. We are coming up on one year living in this pandemic, and we have all spent so much of this last year facing challenges that we never could have expected before March of 2020 and challenges that we're still adjusting to. And we've spent the last year so focused on our own physical health, trying not to get COVID, trying to make sure that we're washing our hands, we're wearing our mask, we're keeping our distance. But all of that has, no matter your situation, had an effect on our mental health as well. Change is hard, change is hard under any circumstance, but it's especially hard when it's done immediately, like we all had to quickly shift back in the spring of 2020. And then when it's done, when we don't really understand exactly what's going on and living under the risk that we've all been living with for roughly the last year, all of that pressure is mounting on people. It's mounting on adults, it's mounting on kids. We've all been living with these changes and these challenges. And so we wanted to take a look at what's happening to our mental health. What has the toll on our mental well-being been over the last year? We're in 2021 and I wanted to take a look at this. I wanted to do focus on this topic of mental health uh, as an episode of KSAT Explains because I noticed it in my own life. I felt the pressure of it. I felt the anxiety of living with uh, the stress of the normal things we do every day now being risky, the grocery store, a restaurant, seeing a friend, gathering with family. And I started to notice it in just talking to my friends. We're trying to stay connected so everyone is texting and, and calling each other on the phone instead of seeing each other face to face. And it was almost as if when one person started talking about how the last year has been incredibly challenging in ways we never expected, it was a waterfall of conversation conversation. Uh, everyone started sharing just different aspects of the, the tough situations they found themselves in that none of us knew about. And it was incredibly helpful to share that. So I hope that in this episode of KSAT Explains, we look ahead to what's on the horizon in this pandemic and ways that we can meet those challenges and take care of ourselves at the same time. Case that explains your mental health in 2021 is now available to stream on demand. You can find it on ksat.com slash explains or on the KSAT TV app on most streaming devices. Time now is 809, 35 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, thousands of Amazon warehouse workers are voting on whether to unionize. Plus, it is Saturday and we are talking Texas Eats. I'm trying to keep it a little short on this one, but don't worry after the break. David Elder giving us an inside look. We might be talking about 13 pounds of ramen.
Oh my gosh, 13 pounds of really warm ramen. Sounds so good right now because it's 35 degrees. It's cold out there. What does our weekend forecast look like? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Good morning and happy Saturday. Sarah Costa, what does Saturday mean? I don't know, Max. What does it mean? It means we are talking Texas Eats. I love the intro, by the way, getting everyone in a good mood. Yeah. Well, in today's preview, host David Elder takes us inside a Northwest Side noodle shop to show us their Asian Mexican fusion ramen. Mm. These are not traditional ramen bowls. And this one has, was it menudo? That's, yes, that's <laughs> the menudo ramen. You know, when I eat menudo, I love menudo, but there's always one problem I always have, and I always run out of tortillas. One day I was just like, what if I add noodles to this? And then it just, everything, yeah. all the it gears just, started it grinding. Just it's like, it just, so we have your traditional uh, six minute egg, ramen egg. We have the noodles, the scallions, but then we added the hominy to it, and then the tripe. And on top of that, we added the cilantro scallions and then the lime itself. But the broth is 100% menudo. So I want to get a little bit of everything. Got the hominy off to the side. Kind of mix all this in there. Oh, man. That's the noodle pool. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Here we go. Try that right here. The menudo ramen is a fun blend of two cultures, and it has the, all the essence that you want from menudo, and then it has all the ramen noodles, the little green onions in there that you're gonna get from the Asian culture, and it just works. It's really interesting how this actually all comes together, and it just makes sense. Wow, I would say on this one, you really nailed true menudo, the red menudo that you want. And like you're saying, you're making it from the peppers, you're not using a powder or anything like yeah. that. And it's fun, because everything plays so well together, and then you, you still have some of those elements of traditional ramen in there. And isn't it crazy, these two cultures, you put them together like this, and it just works. And it works, yep. All right, so I have to say, ramen is like one of my favorite foods mm -hmm. in the whole wide world. Um, but it's kind of a sneaky dish because you think soup, oh man, how light and it's just a light lunch. No, 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 no. no. When you eat ramen, you are full of <laughs> <laughs> about four hours. My friend described it best. She said it's like a cheeseburger in a bowl. Pretty much. Like, yeah, that's exactly what it's like. So I'm excited for that episode uh, from David Elder later on this morning. For now, though, let's go ahead and take a look at our rainfall so far this year. You know, we're doing all right. We've seen 84 hundredths of an inch of rainfall at the airport so far, which is actually a little bit more than average. And so we're starting to see a dent in the drought. There's still drought conditions out there, most definitely, but I'm looking forward to this week. We have the chance for some rain. In fact, scattered showers and storms are going to be possible Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Things are a little murky as far as timing goes and the areas that could see the most rain, but I just want to put that on your radar, pun intended, that we are going to be seeing a chance for rain this week. The good news is it holds off until after the extended weekend. So we can enjoy this long three day weekend uh, outdoors if you choose to. Uh, but for now, just know that it's cold out there. 30 degrees at Port SA, so below freezing there. 28 at Stinson, 35 officially at the airport, 28 at Bernie Stage Airfield, and 25 in Comfort, 24 in Kerrville. We've got very dry air in place. That's why we were able to cool down in the overnight hours. But dry air does the opposite during the daylight hours and that we warm up really quickly. So this afternoon, it's going to be really nice and temperate outside. One thing that we won't have to worry about today are the breezy conditions that we saw yesterday. Yesterday, winds were gusting up to 30 miles per hour at times. And as you can see right now, winds are pretty much light and variable, and they'll be that way throughout the day. By the end of the day, we'll see our wind turn around to the south, which will uh, help us see dew points go up slightly, but not really affect the quality of the weather outside. It's going to be beautiful over the next three days. In the future cast today, high temperatures should rebound nicely, close to 70 degrees out toward Del Rio and Eagle Pass. 66 for the high in Uvalde, 64 in Kerrville, 64 in New Braunfels. It will be in the mid 60s around the San Antonio neighborhoods. OK, so satellite and radar showing a few more clouds up in the panhandle of Texas, but the big weather story across the nation is this huge upper level low across the Midwest and parts of New England. This brings snowstorms and a lot of rainfall out there. 
Uh, and that's the system that brought us the, uh, the uh, windy conditions here in San Antonio yesterday. But that'll continue to move off to the east, and we'll have a quiet weather pattern through Monday. But like I said, by Tuesday, we'll see uh, a short wave in the upper levels of the atmosphere bring us the chance for some scattered showers and storms as early as Tuesday. And then this big upper level low is going to meander over the southwestern section of the United States uh, through Thursday, bringing us a chance for some scattered showers and storms through Thursday and Thursday night as well. The heavier rain will be up near the Texarkana area, but still we'll get some rain here in San Antonio Tuesday through Thursday. But today is going to be beautiful, sunny and 50 degrees at 10, 59 at noon, 65 for that high temperature, variable winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And again, a great three day weekend for us. A few more clouds by Monday, but a high temperature near 70 degrees. Look at those morning lows too. We got down to 33 degrees this morning, but by Tuesday, our morning lows will be close to 60 degrees. So this morning was actually the coldest will be over the next seven days. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Time now, 818, 35 degrees out. Well, coming up, a new CBD drink by a popular beer company. Details on how and where you can get your hands on this new seltzer. Plus, Amazon employees in Alabama are voting on whether they're going to unionize or not. We have the details on what that could mean for the future of the company. Taking a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, two, nine, five, fireball four, daily four, three, eight, five, four, fireball zero. And your cash five, two, seven, 15, 19, 23. Mega millions, three, 11, 12, 38, 43, big number 15, mega fire four. Good luck. We'll be right back. In your consumer news this morning, thousands of Amazon warehouse workers are voting on whether to unionize. It's happening at the e-commerce giant's warehouse in Alabama. About 6,000 full-time, part-time, and seasonal workers will be allowed to cast mail-in ballots starting February 8th. If they vote yes, the warehouse would become Amazon's first in the U.S. to have unionized workforce. And Grammy winner Pitbull is now co-owner of a NASCAR team. He's partnering with Trackhouse Racing and the team founder, Justin Marks. Driver Daniel Suarez will steer the team's number 99 Chevrolet Camaro at the Daytona 500 next month. Pitbull is using the co-ownership to strengthen his sports leadership art management program at inner city schools. And CBD lovers, listen up. Drink company Molson Coors unveiled a new line of non-alcoholic sparkling CBD beverages. The collection of drinks called Very, Very Vel. But you can get a can. You'll have to visit Colorado if you want one of those drinks. The company says Very Vel is a hemp-derived adaptogenic sparkling CBD water infused with a Crisp taste, zero calories and zero sugar. It comes in three different flavors, grapefruit, tarragon, strawberry hibiscus, and blueberry lavender. What do you think? Are you going to get one? No. Okay. That's <laughs> real quick. 824, 36 degrees out. Well, America's... Oh, we doing birth? Oh, no. Oh, Happy look at birthday, that. Betty White. She's <laughs> America's treasure. She's celebrating under quarantine details on how old the Golden Girl star is turning this weekend. Well, if you're up to date with pop culture, you know Betty White is America's treasure. I don't even think you need to be up to date with pop culture. She's been around for so long. She's actually celebrating her 99th birthday tomorrow. Obviously a legendary actress, best known for some of her fantastic roles, Rose on Golden Girls. Here's the thing though, she was born January 17th, 1922. And what I say was she was around for so long in the business because she spent more than 80 years in show business. In a recent interview, she said she plans to spend her big day in quarantine. She's actually working on getting her 1970s show, The Pet Set, re-released. And Sarah Coase, before we head to break, do you know what she said in her interview was the secret to success? What? Snickers. Uh, I knew it. We gotta knew eat it all Snickers. along. There you go. <laughs> You're not you when you're hungry. 828, 36 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, the CDC is prioritizing smokers over teachers and other critical workers when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine. And looking into the people who stormed the Capitol. Details on the latest in the investigation. That's next.
Good morning and happy Saturday. About 8.32 this morning, Saturday, January 16th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Warming up a little bit. We started at 33 degrees, 36. So Sarah, what is your line where you're no longer frigid? 75. Me? Oh, for Sarah Acosta, it's how much? Sarah? 75. 75? Oh, you oh got a long God. way to go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. For me, I think it's probably around 55 degrees. Okay. Less Ooh. than 55, I'm too cold. If it's more, it's fine. And it's definitely less than 55 <laughs> degrees outside right now. It's 35 at the airport. But look out toward Kerrville and then off to the west. Temperatures are well in the 20s there. 25 in Kerrville, 28 in Hondo, 28 in Uvalde, even 29 degrees in Del Rio. So well below freezing there. And even down in Laredo, freezing right now. Now, areas like Del Rio and Laredo are going to rebound nicely to near 70 degrees this afternoon, but still a very cold start. Uh, maybe wait on walking the dog until after about 10 and <laughs> that's when we'll be able to get up to into the 50s around noon. We'll be at 59 degrees. It's going to be dry, sunny and pleasant today. A high temperature near 65. That's Fido's forecast and honestly your forecast as well. And in the weather headlines, total sunshine today. It'll be pleasant all weekend long as we have an extended weekend, but we do have rain chances next week. So we'll talk about those rain chances when the best chance for rain in San Antonio is. And then we did just get the pollen count in just a couple of minutes ago, and it's not good news in the Mountain Cedar Department. So I'll have that as well for you coming up in a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, neighbors on the north side on edge for about seven hours as police and, and an aggravated robbery suspect had a standoff. The scene has since been cleared, but it started around 3 p.m. yesterday near Churchill Estates. Police say the suspect, a man in his 30s, had a warrant out for his arrest, and when officers spotted him earlier, he fled the scene and barricaded himself inside his apartment. The SWAT team and negotiators were called in to de-escalate the situation. Meanwhile, two other people there were at the apartment when the standoff began. They have since been detained. We are waiting to hear more on this incident. We'll bring you more information as we get it on air and online. Now for some of the top stories are on ksat.com members of a local organization who say their goal is to hold bad San Antonio police officers accountable want to refute quote false claims about them. The San Antonio Coalition for Police Accountability says it plans to call out the San Antonio Police Officers Association at a press event at 10 o'clock this morning. Coalition members said SAPOA lied about a campaign to change SAPD and claims the police union has engaged in illegal activities that could result in federal investigations. And for the first time in almost two decades, San Antonio based Frost Bank is laying off dozens of their employees across the country. The senior vice president confirming that 68 out of 4700 positions were eliminated Wednesday because of this pandemic. The positions were spread out across the company in multiple locations and multiple departments. The senior vice president says that employees that were laid off will receive a generous severance package. And the National Rifle Association announced it has filed for bankruptcy protection. The association will seek to incorporate the nation's most politically influential gun rights group in Texas instead of New York, where a state lawsuit is pending. The lawsuit is seeking its dissolution over claims that top executive el executives illegally diverted tens of millions of dollars for lavish personal trips, no-show contracts for associates, and other questionable expenditures. Now to the latest in the investigation of the rioters at the Capitol. New arrests and court appearances for those facing charges, plus the search for more suspects. ABC's Andrew Dimbert joins us with more from Washington. This morning, a dragnet from coast to coast. The Department of Justice now opening nearly 300 investigations related to the attack on Capitol Hill. A great bulk of those were misdemeanor cases, but as the investigation continues, as the days and weeks progress, we're looking at more significant federal felony charges. Federal law enforcement officials dropping the hammer down on some of the more visible alleged rioters, including this horn-helmed, face-painted, spear-wielding man, Jacob Chansley, self-described as the Q on shaman for his apparent ties to the right wing conspiracy platform. His attorney telling ABC Chancellor felt like he was answering the call of President Trump. 
Authorities also arresting this man, Peter Stager, a suspected violent pro-Trump rioter from Arkansas who investigators say beat an officer with an American flag. Another officer injured, Michael Fanone, engulfed by this crowd outside the Capitol. The officer says he was tased half a dozen times by rioters and suffered a mild heart attack that day. The sprawling investigation crossing multiple states and jurisdictions. Prosecutors charging Texas realtor Jennifer Ryan, who the FBI says traveled from Texas to Washington on a private jet and joined the angry pro-Trump mob. According to court documents, Ryan posted her movements throughout that fateful day, including this photo where she posed in front of a broken window at the Capitol and threatened to come after news studios next. Meanwhile, for anyone who participated in the violence and desecration, a blunt warning from federal investigators. You might want to consider turning yourself in instead of wondering when we're going to come knocking on your door, because we will. And that was Andrew Dimbert reporting here in Texas. The state capitol, as well as capitol grounds, will be closed today through Wednesday, the day of the inauguration. The Texas Department of Public Safety says that they are aware of what they call violent extremists who might conduct criminal acts. Well, back here at home, if you've driven past the Pearl along 281, you may have noticed a billboard with several messages. One of them from the FBI. The agency is requesting tips in the violence that happened at the Capitol last, last week. If you have any tips, the number to dial is right there on your screen, 1-800-CALL-FBI. You can also leave a tip online at fbi.gov slash U.S. Capitol. In your morning headlines, at least 45 people dead, hundreds more injured after a 6.2 level earthquake shook Indonesia last night. Roads, buildings, homes damaged, many areas still without power. Cargo planes carrying food and supplies landed for distribution in temporary shelters. But as you can see in that video, devastating. Thousands spent the night in open, fearing aftershocks and a possible tsunami. A lot of survivors say aid has not reached them yet because of the damaged roads. Well, federal safety officials are investigating the people who took part in last week's ride at the U.S. Capitol to decide whether they belong on the federal no-fly list. They say they are increasing security at Washington area airports leading up to next week's presidential inauguration. The head of TSA says that includes more police and bomb detecting dogs and more federal air marshals on certain flights. Now to a story we've been reading about overnight into the morning, a new CDC vaccination guideline drawing a lot of criticism for prioritizing smokers over teachers and other critical workers. Smokers under the age of 65 are in Group 1C. It's for people ages 65 to 74, younger adults with pre-existing conditions and essential workers. Phase two is when grade school educators, critical workers in high-risk environments and homeless shelter clients and staff they can receive doses. States can choose to rework their phases. Time now, just about 8.40, 37 degrees out. Well, there is no doubt the transition to virtual learning during the pandemic has been difficult for many students, particularly low-income students. Still ahead, how to narrow the learning gap. And details about where you can get a free bag of popcorn, how and when. I love popcorn. Super, super good, especially movie popcorn. All right, today might be a good day to watch a movie. It's cold outside, 37 degrees, but Sarah Spivey says it may warm up. She'll let us know our full forecast when we come back. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. Now, I have another deal for you that your dentist will thank you for, a portable water flosser. This item is perfect for the entire family, and it works for implants, braces, crowns, and bridges, too. It's a cordless water flosser teeth cleaner by Dr. Bay. Sounds like a mouthful, but this award-winning flosser really supports great oral health. We'll actually give it a little try here. Woo, that is a lot of pressure there, so you know it's getting the job done. Now it has a 360 degree rotating nozzle, cleans every corner of your mouth and in between your teeth, three adjustable water pressures. Choose the best mode for your teeth. It also comes with a flosser, nozzle, and USB cable and travel bag. Helps also to fight gum disease and you'll have that great smile. Now the retail price is $59. The case at deals price, $46.95. That's a 21% discount. Now you can find this deal and many more at caseatdeals.com. Well, this coming Tuesday, January 19th, is U.S. National Popcorn Day. That's right. You might need the, uh, the water flosser for it, yeah. too. <laughs>
And if you want a free bag of popcorn, all you have to do is visit any Evo Entertainment Theater during regular hours. You won't even need to buy a movie ticket to get the free popcorn. There's a few theaters fairly close to San Antonio, including locations in Schertz, Fredericksburg, San Marcos, New Braunfels, and so many more places. Santico's Theaters also offering a regular size bag of popcorn for just a dollar or a large bag of popcorn for just two dollars at any Santico's locations during their normal operating hours. There you go. For the longest time, I've always gone to, like, if I'm craving movie popcorn, I'll just go and walk in and buy it and walk out. <laughs> so good. Well, you know, not too many movies showing right now, so that works out too, Sarah. Okay, I promised you I'd show you the pollen count. Not a great pollen count today. Uh, yesterday we had very windy conditions, and it makes sense that our mountain cedar count is very high. 13,420 pollen grains per cubic meter of air. Mold is also elevated. It was high yesterday. It fell a little bit today, but it's still moderate. Uh, but of course, the mountain cedar is the thing that everybody is really worrying about at this time of year. And by the way, mountain cedar season, it's typically in its peak right now. It peaks in mid January and ends on Valentine's Day. So we can expect mountain cedar to stay elevated at least for the next couple of weeks uh, as those trees shed the pollen. Right now outside, a beautiful view of clear skies, 35 degrees though. Uh, and I just looked at the minute by minute uh, temperature takes there at the airport and we're up to about 38. So temperatures are rising. It's just a we got to give it a little bit more time to see the atmosphere warm up completely. It's 30 degrees at Port of Say, 28 in Hondo, 31 in Tarpley, 28 in Comfort, 29 in Kerrville. A cold morning all across the KSAT 12 viewing area, even out toward Del Rio, 29 degrees this morning. And our friends in Laredo got down to freezing as well. But because we have a very dry atmosphere in place, dew points are in the teens and 20s. We're going to warm up really nicely today. Dry atmosphere cools down quickly at night and warms up quickly during the day. And so look at these temperatures today. We'll already be at 50 degrees by 10, 59 at noon, 65 for the high temperature. So it's going to be a gorgeous afternoon. Variable winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. You know, yesterday we had those wind gusts of 30 miles per hour from the north. And so today those winds will be much more relaxed than yesterday. And that, that's good news all around, especially for that mountain cedar count. Today Tonight, temperatures are going to uh, tumble pretty quickly. We'll be back into the 40s by 8 p.m. and mid 40s by 10 p.m. Quiet across the state of Texas today with a few areas of snow in the panhandle. But really, the big weather maker across the United States is this huge upper level low pressure system. This is the same thing that made us very windy yesterday. So, uh, of course, you know, it's it's college football time. Uh, pardon me, it's not college football, it's National Football League. The playoffs are going on right now. And uh, one game in uh, Green Bay and the other in Buffalo, and those are going to be snow games today, so it's going to be pretty cool to see that on the television. Here in San Antonio, we're going to see uh, beautiful weather all uh, this extended weekend, except for by Tuesday, we'll have areas of scattered showers and even a few storms from a short wave in the upper levels of the atmosphere. But a big low pressure system is going to keep rain chances in the forecast through Thursday, scattered rain chances in the forecast through Thursday. When all is said and done, by the end of the week in San Antonio, we could see pockets of one to one and a half inches of rainfall, much needed rain around San Antonio. But like I said, this extended weekend is going to be gorgeous, a little bit warmer tomorrow, but just by a couple of degrees and a few more clouds on Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day and a high temperature near 70 degrees. There's that chance for scattered showers and storms. By the way, we're cold this morning, but look at those morning lows. This is actually going to be the coldest will be all week long over the next seven days. I think a welcome change to San Antonio. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Time now, 8.48, 38 degrees out. Well, there is no doubt the transition to virtual learning during the pandemic has been difficult for many students, particularly low-income students just ahead, the ABCDs of virtual learning. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. Since last March, remote and hybrid models of learning have created a lot of challenges for educators, teachers, faculty, and especially families, including access to technology. And for starters, think about this. Three in 10 adults and families who make below the federal poverty level do not have a smartphone or a computer. That's right. Eric Hernandez has details on how to narrow that learning gap. Hello, everyone. I hope you Kids going day. from here to here. It's not an easy transition for everyone. 
It's because of the fact that they don't have the instruction face to face. They have a lot more difficulty understanding. It's not ideal for long term, I think. Based on Census Bureau numbers from 2015, about 35% of households with an annual income below $30,000 and school-aged children do not have access to high-speed internet at home. This is compared to only 6% of households making $75,000 or more a year. No internet at home makes virtual learning a challenge, but parents can look to the ABCDs of virtual learning to bridge that gap. Reach out to your child's school to discuss the problems you're facing. Teachers or school tech specialists can often provide assistance navigating software. Call your local internet provider. Schools may also be able to provide a list of internet services that are providing free broadband access to low-income families. Schools may also help you navigate connectivity issues. Some school districts are providing students with devices to access the internet. Since children crave routines and schedules, parents can create virtual schedules to create some structure during the day. Social scientists suggest parents allow for flexibility and strike a balance that works for their household. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 854, 40 degrees out. Go ahead, Max. All right, we are talking Spurs, taking on the Rockets, a little back-to-back -back action. They didn't have a great result last time. Let's see if we can turn that around. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. We are talking Spurs this Saturday, 4 p.m. today. We're going to get about the matchup in just a few moments, but it is a rematch with the, you know, the Rockets. Uh, they're going to be hosting the Rockets. Second straight game. This was the last time. Let's see if we can take the highlights. That was the Rockets. They didn't look great. John Wall on the sideline. This was in the midst of that whole James Harden drama. Clearly, it motivated the Rockets. Christian Wood doing enough to lead the Rockets to a win. Keldon Johnson, a heck of a game, 29 points. Sadly, though, not enough for the silver and black. They would lose. DeMar would get the last shot, but he would miss it. 109-105 loss. Don't worry, though. Redemption could come today. 4 o'clock, AT&T Center. Rockets coming to San Antonio. So there you go, Sarah. Still early in the season. We'd still make the playoffs if they started tomorrow. That's all the important that we need to know. All right. 857, 40 degrees out. Well, there's still no winner for the Mega Millions. Dang it. Uh. After the break, how <laughs> high it is and how high it's now and when the next drawing will be. The Trump administration getting ready to leave the White House. President Donald Trump plans to fly to Florida on Air Force One Wednesday morning before President-elect Joe Biden takes office. We have more on the plan. Well, Facebook is monitoring for signs of impending violence ahead of the presidential inauguration, the restrictions they are taking. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, starting to heat up out there, already 40 degrees. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday, January 16th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Sarah Costa, we started at 33, already rocketed up to 40 degrees. How are you feeling? I'm cold just because I'm inside studio. I'm cold everywhere. But, Sarah, it's going to warm up, right? Yeah, and in fact, it's actually warmer than 40 degrees. It's 43 degrees Whoa. outside right now. Temperatures are responding nicely to the sunshine. Uh, in fact, many places were in the 20s this morning, particularly Hondo was down to 28. Now they're at 38. So we are seeing a steady warm up here. 31 in Kerrville, still below freezing up in Comfort, where it's 30 degrees. 40 in Pleasanton, 42 at JBSA Randolph, and 44 in New Braunfels. But unfortunately, today we do have to to deal with a pretty bad pollen count. In fact, Mountain Cedar is very high today, past 13,000. And mold is moderate at 980. The reason why Mountain Cedar went up, of course, the gusty winds yesterday. What we really need is some rain to wash the pollen out of the air. And we do have rain in the forecast. So I'll tell you about when we can expect rain around San Antonio and give you an overview of this extended weekend coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. In this morning's top stories, one man is in critical condition after being stabbed downtown and police are searching for up to three suspects. Investigators tell us around 2.15 this morning, a man got into a fight with three other men in a parking lot near St. Mary's and Convent. That man was stabbed in the stomach and was found near his vehicle. Right now, police are working to figure out exactly what happened and who is responsible. The only lead police have at this point is that the suspects took off in a dark colored vehicle. And a mother and son trying to figure out what comes next after their home caught fire twice in just one day. 
This was the scene yesterday. Fire crews there telling us the first fire started around 7 last night. This is a home in the 200 block of Goodwin. Now, firefighters say the 12 year old boy was home alone during the first fire. Crews were able to put it out quickly. They even turned off the electricity just to be safe. Then about five and a half hours later, around 1230 this morning, the house caught fire again in a different area. Fortunately, that home was empty. Arson investigators called out because officials are saying it seemed deliberate. Damages estimated around $80,000. Luckily, though, no injuries were reported. Well, now to an update on coronavirus cases here at home. City health officials reporting more than 2,800 new cases in Bear County. We are now seeing more than 2,000 cases on our seven-day rolling average. Six new people have died from the virus. There are 1,387 COVID-19 patients hospitalized. 403 of them are in the ICU and 243 are in ventilators. And as preparations are underway for President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration, the Trump administration is actually preparing to leave office. While Vice President Mike Pence has reached out to his counterpart, VP-elect Kamala Harris, there's been nothing like that from President Donald Trump. CNN's Caitlin Collins has more. During his final days in the White House, President Trump is planning an early exit. Instead of attending his successor's inauguration, CNN has learned Trump will leave Washington early Wednesday following a military send-off and plans to be in Florida by the time Joe Biden is sworn in. Not going to the inauguration, maybe that's best now, given the situation we're in. Trump was against the idea of leaving D.C. as an ex-president, meaning he'll get one last flight on Air Force One and won't need Biden's permission to use a government jet. Military aides will have two nuclear footballs ready, one that will fly with Trump and one that will be with Biden. Once Biden is sworn in, Trump's launch codes will no longer work. With five days left in office, Trump is watching his presidency unravel after being impeached for inciting a deadly insurrection on Capitol Hill. He's leaving the White House with the lowest approval rating of his presidency, after it fell to 29% in the latest poll conducted by Pew Research, which also found that two-thirds of Americans don't want Trump to remain a major national political figure. We should never, as a party, let a person be more powerful than our party. Sources say the president's advisors have casually discussed him resigning, but Trump shut the conversation down immediately and banned all mentions of Richard Nixon, who resigned in 1974 before he could be impeached and possibly convicted. Instead of following in Nixon's footsteps, Trump will face a second impeachment trial. Although House Speaker Nancy Pelosi declined to give details on when that trial will happen today. I find this to be a very emotional time. I've said to the members, we're very passionate to our reaction to this assault on our democracy. As National Guard troops flooded Washington, Vice President Mike Pence has filled the typical role taken by a president during a time of crisis, as Trump has mostly remained behind closed doors. And on Inauguration Day, as Trump flies out, President-elect Biden is expected to attend a church service before he is sworn in as the nation's 46th president. In your morning headlines, Facebook says it is monitoring for signs of impending violence and instituting new policies ahead of Inauguration Day. The company says repeat offenders won't be able to stream live video through Wednesday Inauguration Day. They also won't be able to create groups, events or pages. In a statement released yesterday, Facebook also says it's banning new events tied to the United States or state capitals. It's reviewing existing inauguration events and removing those that violate the policies. Well, no lottery ticket matched all six numbers drawn last night. The Mega Millions jackpot is now up to an estimated $850 million. It's currently the third largest lotto prize in American history. The jackpot has been growing ever since September. The next Mega Millions drawing will be on Tuesday night. Well, San Antonio is known as the city with the largest MLK march across the country. While the pandemic is keeping crowds from coming together, it's not stopping the city from celebrating in honor of Dr. King's dream. That's why Monday's celebration will be virtual. There's going to be or there were several days of filming scheduled to create a video, a special, amazing video for Monday's celebration. It is all in an effort to encourage residents to safely participate in Dr. King's legacy. You can watch the virtual celebration on the city's TV SA channel at 10 a.m. And time now, it's 9.07, 40 degrees out. Well, a new Marvel series is now 
on Disney Plus when we have a look inside that's still ahead. And it's Saturday. Of course, we are talking Texas Eats, a special episode and even a special David Elder sighting in studio later this morning. Looks like a lot of pork. Yum. <laughs> All right, 40 degrees outside. Sarah Spivey says things will warm up later today, but what will our weekend forecast look like? And what does the week look like? She'll let us know when we come back. And welcome back. I love that intro. It just gets you in the mood. I was just saying, I'm so hungry. So thank goodness we could talk Texas Eats. And David Elder is going to be joining us later this morning. I'm hungry too, Max. Well, David Elder introduces us to Reina, a social media food competitor, taking on a 13-pound ramen challenge at the new ramen shop on the east side of downtown San Antonio. Is this intimidating to you at all? Have you, have you done something similar to this or on this level? I definitely done something similar, but just looking at the amount of meat that they have here today, it is kind of intimidating. That is a lot of food and a lot of noodles. Slight, little short, 13 pounder. Little under 13 pounds. Wow. Okay, it's still under 13 pounds. That is. I think she might be okay with that. The ramen bowl is slightly under 13 pounds, but still, come on, it's almost 13 pounds of ramen. That's still a huge feat. And the time frame to finish all this food, 30 minutes. Let's see if Raina can do it. We got a really good crowd here today, so I want you guys to give a countdown, and we will get started from 10, 9, nine 8, eight seven, 7, 6. six Five, four, three, two, one. Do you guys think she does it? No way. She's like a tiny, tiny That's little person. Crazy. <laughs> I can't wait to see that episode to see if she accomplishes it. Yeah, that was a great tease. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Add 13 pounds to your weight just by eating. That's crazy. Sounds okay. very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that Texas Eats episode. Looking forward to warming up today. This morning we got down to 33 degrees, but take a look at morning lows over the next few days. We're slowly going to be seeing temperatures rise. So honestly, this morning is the coldest morning of the seven day forecast. Even tomorrow we'll still be in the 30s, but a little bit warmer than today. By Monday morning, we'll be in the 40s. Speaking of the 40s, that's where we're at right now in San Antonio. So we've already seen temperatures rise by about 10 degrees. 43 at the airport, 41 in the Lotus, 41 in Castroville, 38 in Hondo, 35 in Tar Sharply. Temperatures still below freezing in Kerrville, but it'll get above freezing here fairly shortly. 44 New Braunfels and 38 in Canyon Lake. You know, yesterday we had winds gusting up to 30 miles per hour. It was very breezy, but as you can see out there right now, winds are pretty much light and variable. We've got a northwesterly breeze at about five miles per hour today, so we won't have to deal with the breeze today, which is, you know, good news. Mountain cedar leaves, lives up in the hill country, and anytime we get that cedar wind, uh, we see the numbers go up as we did today so it's nice to know that we won't have to worry about a wind but mountain cedar is still high out there. Uh, temperatures today going to be a little warm, uh, but comfortable out toward Del Rio Eagle Pass, 70 degrees, 71 in Catula, 73 in Laredo, but really comfortable here in San Antonio, 65 degrees for the high, 64 in New Braunfels, 62 for our friends up in Austin, 64 in Kerrville. It'll feel great, especially in the sunshine out there. Uh, now uh, it's a little bit of a different story out to the Midwest in New England. They're dealing with a snowstorm and some rainfall across New England. And by the way, this is that same system that brought us the windy conditions here in San Antonio. We are going to be seeing a really nice weekend, pretty uh, temperate out there with uh, temperatures uh, right in the upper 60s, near 70 degrees, not only today, but also tomorrow and Monday as we enjoy a three day weekend. So we'll have plenty to enjoy outside as far as the weather is concerned. But as soon as the weekend is over, the extended weekend is over Tuesday, we're going to have scattered showers and a few storms in the area as well, about 40% chance. And then an upper level low is going to keep rain chances in the forecast through Thursday for us. You can see that the better rain chance is going to be pretty much near the Dallas Fort Worth area and the Texarkana area, but we'll still get some rain here in San Antonio. 
Antonio and we'll call it a blanketed 40% chance for scattered showers and storms Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. We'll be able to refine that forecast for you a little bit better, but rain is possible this week and when all is said and done through Friday, some areas around San Antonio could see about a half an inch to an inch of much needed rainfall. We're under drought conditions right now, so it's nice to welcome the rain, especially after the weekend, because today's going to be gorgeous, sunny and 50 degrees at 10, 59 at noon, 65 for that high temperature, and again, variable winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. It'll be chilly this evening, and one more morning in the 30s tomorrow morning before uh, we see a gradual warm up with a return of some moisture there. So a beautiful weekend, three day weekend for us and then the chance for some much needed rain Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Max, I saw you smiling over there. What were you smiling about? Because it is going to be a perfect day to sit outside, go to a local establishment and watch football and basketball all day today. <laughs> it's Sounds National good. Do Nothing Day, Max. It's National Watch the uh, Wild Card and Spurs Day. There you go. Time now, 916, 43 degrees out. Well, Google has completed its acquisition of electronics and fitness tracking company Fitbit. What does this mean for the company still ahead in our next half hour? And Elizabeth Olsen taking her Marvel character to the suburbs, a new Marvel sitcom. Sarah, you're big into Disney Plus, right? Yes, WandaVision. I'm so excited about this. There you go. We have a preview next. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is getting its first Disney Plus series this weekend. CNN's Rick Damagella tunes in to WandaVision. Wanda and Vision, aren't we a five pair? This is our home now. I want us to fit in. Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany go retro with their big screen Marvel superhero roles in WandaVision. We just don't know what to expect. Yeah, I've seen the first three episodes of WandaVision and it is... It is very surreal and weird. The trailers do this show justice because I think when anybody has seen these trailers, there people are scratching their heads going, what the heck is happening? Well, then tell me what's so important about today's date. <laughs> what was the question again? The idea, and I'm not going to spoil too much, but the idea is that Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, and the Vision are bouncing through different eras of classic television. Something's wrong here. This is not a standalone thing. It absolutely is a part of the grander Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's funny, it's engaging, it's silly, it's goofy, because they do a lot of the, the superhero effects practically as well, with invisible wires and things like that. So it's it, it's amazing when you're watching, like the characters are flying or they're doing magic effects. It's old TV magic, but it somehow still works. They are an unusual couple, you know? Oh, I don't think that was ever in question. <laughs> Geeking out in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. WandaVision is now streaming on Disney+. Plus. All right, so I, I still don't really understand what the show is about, but I, I did see the other two Marvel shows that are going to be on Disney+. Plus. They both look really good, too. The one with Thor's brother, with Loki? Loki. Yeah, that one looks good. It's all good. All right, time now, 921, 43 degrees out. Well, next on GMSA, how Pope Francis is also honoring the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. Good morning, welcome back. New York Yankees legend Yogi Berra is getting the honor of his own stamp. Yes, he is one of the several forever stamps that the U.S. Postal Service is set to roll out in the coming months. Barrow was one of the most celebrated baseball stars of his era back in the 1950s. The Hall of Fame catcher won 10 World Series championships with the New York Yankees. Barrow also widely known for his colorful sayings such as Yokeisms. There you go. Well, Pope Francis now has his own Atlanta Hawks jersey, which celebrates the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In November, the Pope and NBA players met to talk about economic inequality and social justice. The Hawks will wear MLK jerseys for Monday's game as part of their commitment to those values. The team sent this jersey to the Pope, and this is him blessing and signing it on Friday. Notice the name on the back says Francis. Love it. That's so creative. There we go. Very Aww. cute. Very cute. All right, time now, 925, 45 degrees out. Well, President Donald Trump is planning a farewell event, refusing to attend President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration, something that hasn't happened in more than 150 years. We have the details ahead. 
Good morning. Welcome back and happy weekend. Just about 930 this morning, Saturday, January 16th. Both of this for both of us. It's Monday, right? Yeah. OK, it's how was your weekend? My weekend was good. Do you feel refreshed? Saturdays are my favorite well, I, day. I think I slept like 12 hours yesterday. Whoa! Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> Even I was though telling. It was sunny outside. I slept in. I was telling Spivey, love Saturdays. And part of today, I'm looking forward to the sun. Yeah, the sun. But I hope, Max, that you don't struggle with a mountain cedar allergy Oof. because today, mountain cedar is very high. It's up from yesterday. And the reason for that is, of course, we had those gusty northwest winds. The cedar trees live up in the hill country, and so anytime we get a northwest wind, we see those numbers go up. So Mount Cedar is very high today. It's past 13,420. Mold is moderate uh, out there, but again, it's the Mount Cedar that, that's really causing the wheezing and the sneezing. Uh, now, temperatures are warming up. It's still cool out there, definitely. It's 43 degrees at the airport, but we were able to see a morning low of 33. So in just a couple of hours of sunshine, Sunshine. We've already seen the temperature rise by 10 degrees. Now, if you're wanting to walk the dog today, or maybe you yourself just want to go for a walk or a run, Fido's forecast, good dog walking weather today. 50 degrees at 10, 59 at noon, 65 for the high temperature in and around San Antonio and a chilly evening tonight with temperatures falling back into uh, the 40s. Fido would love a good walk outside, and I'm sure you'd enjoy some time outside too. And not only today, but all throughout the weekend, this extended weekend, three day weekend, the weather is going to be really pleasant. I will say, however, that rain chances are going to increase next week after the three day weekend, and we need the rain, so th that's good news. But coming up in the forecast, I'll detail which days are, are the best for rain chances and potentially how much rain we could see in and around San Antonio. Your full forecast in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And your top stories this morning arson investigators working to figure out what exactly sparked a fire that ended with $100,000 of damages. So take a look. This was the scene just after two this morning. This is the 3400 block of West Commerce. Firefighters on the scene telling us when they arrived, they found a vacant home engulfed in flames. The home sustaining heavy damages considered a total loss. Luckily, no injuries reported. Well, Metro Health is distributing 9,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine starting on Monday at the Alamo Dome. However, the city is only setting up appointments for 2,000 slots per day. There are two ways you can register, so make sure you take a look at your screen right now. You can make an appointment by visiting the city's website or calling 311 and selecting option 8. Again, if you get a busy signal, that means all the operators are busy and you should try again. That's right. And the well-med clinics on the west and south side of town also rolling out 9,000 vaccines. The Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior One Stop Center off of Calabra Road and the Elvira Cisneros Senior Community Activity Center off Southwest Military. They are taking appointments for their own 9,000 dose shipment. Appointments can only be made by phone. That number on your screen 833-968-1745. All appointment slots that were open today have already been filled. Now to the latest in D.C. President Donald Trump planning a farewell event while President-elect Joe Biden focusing on how to move forward with his agenda in the first days of his presidency. All as the Senate will be handling an impeachment trial. ABC's Rachel Scott is in Washington with this story. With just four days left in office, President Trump is now planning a grand departure, refusing to attend Joe Biden's inauguration, something that hasn't happened in more than 150 years. Sources tell us before Biden is sworn in, the president wants his own farewell, a red carpet and military band waiting as he boards Air Force One for the final time headed to Mar-a-Lago. Inside the White House, aides are packing up their desks, moving trucks spotted outside as the president refuses to concede an election he lost. What you get is what it is. The president did meet with my pillow CEO Mike Lindell in the Oval Office on Friday. The Washington Post capturing this image of his notes appearing to detail drastic actions like martial law and an insurrection act. Lindell confirming the meeting, saying he presented President Trump with an entire packet containing repeatedly discredited theories regarding election hacking. White House sources tell ABC News nothing Lindell presented would be taken seriously or acted on by officials. <laughs> Meanwhile, the nation still reeling from a deadly riot on the U.S. Capitol is now preparing for an inauguration and an impeachment trial. That president was impeached in a bipartisan way 
by the House of Representatives. So urgent was the matter. They're now taking this to trial. That trial in the Senate could be playing out during Biden's first 100 days in office. We have to multitask, um, which means, as with anyone, we have a lot of priorities and we need to see them through. One of those priorities, getting Congress to pass a nearly $2 trillion COVID relief package, which includes $1,400 in direct payments to most Americans. And again, that was Rachel Scott reporting. Well, MLK Day is on Monday, and every year San Antonio has the largest march across the country. But with COVID, the MLK Commission and local community leaders had to shift this year. Tomorrow morning on Leading SA, we are joined by Renee Watson, the Commission Chair, or the MLK Commission Chair, and we're going to be discussing the plan going forward for this year's march, the significance of the last eight months, and how local community members can participate and can help out. If you have any questions that you would like asked, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. It's a hardship millions of Americans live with, but have trouble talking about. That's why we invite you to join us for our virtual mental health awareness town hall. We will have a panel of experts to explain mental illnesses and share how you can make a difference. It's all on Wednesday, January 27th at 2 p.m. You can find more information on ksatcommunity.com. Time now, 935, 45 degrees out. Well, the pandemic may leave more than 40 million Americans without a job, risking their homes and their health. Are you prepared for an emergency? How close are you to the poverty line? Next on GMSA, what the results of a poll show. And Google buying fitness tracking company Fitbit, what this means for the company and what it means for the privacy of the clients. Do you have like a Fitbit? A, I, you know, I, I did, but I didn't like wearing it. Mm. It was, it made me feel fat. <laughs> All right, <laughs> 45 degrees outside. Hey, it's National Do Nothing Day, right? Um, but Sarah Spivey will let us know about the weekend weather when we come back. In your morning consumer news, the popular app Bumble that helps single women meet single men is getting ready for a big date with Wall Street. The female-centric dating app fil filed its initial public offering paperwork on Friday. Bumble is poised to follow another recent successful tech IPOs like Airbnb and DoorDash. The dating app has provided a lifeline for singles to connect during the pandemic. Headquartered in Austin, Bumble will list on the NASDAQ exchange under the acronym BM. BL. And Google completing its acquisition of the electronics and fitness tracking company Fitbit. The search giant Google announced the news in a Thursday press release touting Fitbit's 29 million active users. The statement was a warm welcome to the Fitbit team. Google made a point of explaining that the acquisition was hardware and device oriented, not about the data. The search engine says it will protect people's privacy. That includes not using their health and wellness data for Google ads. So there you go. Are you guys into the, the Fitbit stuff? I they never had a Fitbit, mm -hmm. but I like anxious. the step counters. Oh, okay. Because it makes me feel productive just by walking. <laughs> It makes me feel not productive enough. Oh, mm. I see, you I know? see. I do love the people who like out of nowhere will get up and do a lap. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, oh, Fitbit says I got to get up. I'm like, trying oh. to get my steps in. Exactly. Gotta <laughs> connect to my circles. What's that? That's the Apple thing, right? Uh, right. Uh, uh, but rings. <laughs> the, exactly. That's right, Sarah. We're trying to get some rain in our forecast because we definitely need rain. Drought conditions exist around San Antonio, especially out to the west. But this month so far has been pretty beneficial. We've seen 84 hundreds of an inch of rainfall at the airport, which is a little bit above average uh, for right now. And with more rain on the way, we have a chance to add to that number, which I'm I'm hoping for. Again, we are under drought conditions, and so it'd be nice to see some rain. And we have chances for rain Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 40% chance for scattered showers and even a few storms possible as well. Scattered being the key word there. We're not going to have any of these big rainmakers that just dump a lot of rain for all of us. Scattered showers and storms are going to be what what's going to be normal Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, we'll be able to find that forecast a little bit better for you as far as the timeline goes. But just know that this weekend, 
this extended weekend, including Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, is going to be really wonderful. It's 43 degrees outside. Temperatures are warming up really quickly. Uh, in fact, you'll notice that the bug down at the bottom of the screen there says 46 degrees, and that's because temperatures are warming up really quickly, uh, even quicker than our system here uh, registers. 45 in Haloti, for, for Lotus, pardon me, 45 at Verde Stage Airfield, 41 in Bandera, 38 still in Kerrville. Kerrville got down to about 25 degrees this morning, so already 13 degrees warmer in Kerrville, but still chilly. 42 at JBSA Randolph, 45 in Pleasanton, 35 in Del Rio, which got down to 29 degrees this morning, 42 in Laredo. Today, after this cold start, it's going to be really pleasant. In fact, we'll already be near 60 degrees at noon, 65 for the afternoon high, and yesterday our winds were very gusty from the northwest. Today, our winds will be variable, gradually changing from north to south at only 5 to 10 miles per hour, and we're going to have a quick cool down in the evening with temperatures falling back into the mid 40s by 10 o'clock. Pretty quiet across the central plains, a little bit of increasing clouds across the panhandle, but a big weather maker out across parts of the uh, Midwest and the uh, Northeast. In fact, some of the uh, football games that are going to be going on, one in Green Bay and one in Buffalo, if you watch those games, you'll notice some snow uh, for some of those people. It's going to be pretty cold. Uh, meanwhile, though, here in San Antonio, we're going to have a quiet weather pattern through, as I mentioned, Monday, Martin Luther King Day. Uh, and in fact, it'll be gradually warmer tomorrow and on Monday. But by Tuesday, a short wave in the upper levels of the atmosphere is going to provide us with some scattered showers and storms on Tuesday. And then a big upper level low approaching from the west is going to keep those rain chances in the forecast through Thursday. When all is said and done around San Antonio, some places could see uh, one inch uh, of rainfall with the heavier rainfall being, of course, across the Texarkana area. But again, over the next seven days, all those blues that you see, that's rainfall potential of half an inch to an inch in, in those areas. But this weekend is going to be nice. Tomorrow, just a little bit warmer than today in the morning and in the afternoon. Monday morning, we'll actually start off in the 40s and top off near 70 degrees with a few more clouds. And then we'll introduce those rain chances. This is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. By the way, this morning's low of 33, mm. probably going to be the coldest. We're going to be all over the next seven days. Look at those morning lows getting back up into the 50s by the middle of the week. So big weather pattern change coming at you soon. All right, well, we know our Sarah Costa was livid this morning with the 33, but lows of 50s, you can manage that, right? I think I can get through. <laughs> 944, 48 degrees out. Well, your home, your job, your car, how close are you to losing it all? Next, find out ways to stay above your po the poverty line. That's next. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. The pandemic may leave more than 40 million Americans without a job, risking their homes and risking their health. Would you and your family be able to survive without a paycheck coming in every other week? How close are you to the poverty line? Are you prepared for an emergency? As Erica Hernandez reports, most people aren't. Could you live on $12,000 a year? How about a family of four living on $26,000? 34 million people in the U.S. are living on this or less. We became homeless and now we don't have food. And then COVID, it, it's been really, really tough. But would you make the right choices when it comes to living on less? PlaySpent.org puts your knowledge to the test. It asks a series of questions like which job would you take if you are desperate? Do you pay for health insurance or groceries? The choices you can make can be life altering. Experts say preparing for the worst is key. Educate yourself on financial basics. Reflect on your money philosophy. How were you raised to think of money? What are your current beliefs? Then compare to what you've learned. Yeah, the kids get hungry. Ask for help. Avoid borrowing, work with what you have, and focus on your credit. It can be your safety net if you use it wisely. 21 years ago, I was homeless with my children, and today I'm a founder of a nonprofit organization. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It is Saturday, and we have a lot of sports to talk about, especially the San Antonio Spurs. A quick rematch against the Rockets this evening. They're going to be hosting Houston for the second straight game. Let's take you back a couple days. Not an ideal game for the Spurs the last go around. Remember, it was in the midst of that James Harden trade drama. He basically ate his way out of Houston. He's now with Brooklyn. He's teaming up with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. But back to the actual game, the play of Christian Wood. 
fueling the extra motivated Rockets. He had 27 and 15 boards against the Spurs. Key late game block. Keldon Johnson, who has been a star of the year so far, he scored a career high 29, but sadly not enough. DeMar DeRozan finished with 13 points. He had a chance for the last shot of the game, came up just a little bit short. Close in the end, but a tough loss, 109-105. Don't worry, though. The Spurs will have a chance to make up for that subpar performance. They are playing again today, 4 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Sarah Acosta, I am so amped for today. It is technically National Do Nothing Day, so naturally after work today, we got Spurs, we have wild card playoffs, we have a whole weekend. But we don't want the Spurs sports. to do nothing. We want them to do something. Yeah, we need them to win. <laughs> need, need a big W. They can't take the day off. No. All right, 950, 48 degrees out. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, 11 million children lived in food insecure homes, meaning there was not enough food or the right kind of food. Tomorrow on GMSA, a study reveals one factor that may increase a household's risk of being food insufficient. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KZDeals.com. I'm excited to share this next product that makes you feel and look your very best. The amazing face serum that is a breakthrough formula. Now this helps to plump, lift, and firm your skin. And I hear it may be the secret that celebrities use as well. The Bee Venom 24 Karat Gold Serum. Now it's an organic alternative to Botox, proven to visibly reduce fine lines. It refines the skin surface and boosts moisture and long-lasting hydration. Helps to produce crucial skin hydration acids and oil for a radiant complexion. Now the caffeine in here helps to reduce the puffy eyes, which gives you that youthful glow. Now the retail price for this, $304. The case at deals price, $29.95. That's a 90% discount. You can get this deal along with many others at KSETDeals.com. In the news you need to know before you go, one man is in critical condition after being stabbed downtown and police are searching up to three suspects. Investigators tell us around 2.15 this morning, a man got into a fight with three men in a parking lot near St. Mary's and Convent. That man was stabbed in the stomach and was found near his vehicle. Right now, police are working to figure out exactly what happened and who is responsible. The only lead police are aware of at this time is that the suspects took off in a dark colored vehicle. And a mother and son trying to figure out what to do this morning after their home caught fire twice in just one day. Fire crews on the scene tell us the first fire started around 7 last night. This home is in the 200 block of Goodwin, and that first fire happened when the 12 year old boy was home alone. Crews were able to put out the fire quickly. They even turned off the electricity just to be safe. Then about five and a half hours later, around 1230 this morning, the house caught fire again in a different part of the home. Fortunately, no one was home. Arson investigators called out. Officials say it seems like the fire could have been started deliberately. Damages now estimated around $80,000. And not so great news in today's pollen count. Mountain Cedar very, very high today, past 13,000 pollen grains per cubic meter of air, all because we had gusty winds yesterday from the northwest where the cedar trees reside. Mold is moderate at 980, and after a cold start at 33 degrees, we are already at 51, my friends. So we're going to warm up really nicely today. Uh, you can expect a high temperature in the mid 60s around San Antonio. It's an extended three day weekend. It goes all the way to Monday and the weather looks great through that weekend. Uh, in fact, it'll be a little bit warmer on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, a high temperature near 70 degrees. We do introduce rain chances back into the forecast right after the extended weekend. Scattered showers and even a few storms possible Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. This morning's low of 33, the coldest we will be over the next seven days. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. You say we introduce rain chances on Tuesday. We're going to introduce you to David Elder joining us live in studio. We are going to be talking about Texas Eats. David Elder, what do you got going on? All right, you guys, I brought you a gift. <laughs> that is a big gift. <laughs> it's a that. big gift. A 13-pound bowl mm. of ramen. Jeez. What do you think? Do you want to break down what's in the 13-pound yes. bowl? We have fresh noodles that are made specifically for Suck at the Restaurant. Okay. Scallions, caramelized yellow corn. You have gyoza, pot stickers made fresh as well. The little soy eggs on the top, mushrooms, pork belly, and this thing is ready to rock. Do you want to try to angle it towards the yeah. camera without, yeah, without the spilling? pork belly? Oh, the and spill it. the oh, broth yeah. that's in there. Okay, this is 48-hour broth. This is using pork bones and chicken bones, 
and it's made, it's boiled down for 48 hours. Oh my God, it looks and smells so good. With I know, <laughs> the moment you bring it into the- I'm the, drooling a little bit. And, and we saw a teaser <gasps> earlier for your episode today, and there was this little woman that was taking this 13 pound ramen challenge. Does she finish it? Well, we could save her some. Can <laughs> 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 we'll have to wait and see in the episode, right? Yeah. You gotta wait and see. Yeah. I mean, uh, the whole thing know. is, uh, there's this food challenger, her name's Raina, is crazy on social media. She went to this restaurant and she went to go see if she could take it on, but you gotta watch to see if she can actually do it. You can see there, I mean, they actually made hers a little bit crazier. They put chicken on top of hers. They made <laughs> fried chicken. Let's so it's go. even crazier it's than even what you're looking at right here. Pounds. It's, it's wild. Oh it is God. absolutely wild. Uh, she was super fun though, but you got, like I said, you got to watch uh, today to see if she was able to complete the challenge. Uh, and you yourself, if you want to go in, there's going to be more food competitors going into the restaurant coming up the next couple weeks. So what do you if you want to challenge it, you got to hit them up. It's Suck at the Restaurant. They're a new spot on the east side, but they're old locations in the medical center. I've been um, there. It's, yeah. actually, it's really yummy. That's one of my favorite restaurants. People always ask me, David, what's your favorite restaurant in San Antonio? It's a consistent question I get. Suck at the Restaurant always comes to mind. All their products are fresh and their broth is absolutely delicious. So I have to say, so we were in Austin the last couple of days. We went to a ramen place. The actual way to eat ramen, you really do want to make the noise of like, <laughs> it's the way you get the flavor. I'm so excited to see this. <laughs> so we actually have two noodle shops on the show today as yeah. well. Mm. And uh, Noodle Tree as well as Suck at the Restaurant. And at Noodle Tree, I was like, ooh, I just want to eat it like that. And he actually was like, yeah, you can. You can eat it like that. It's <laughs> cool. cool. Uh, okay. Uh, a new cheesecake shop is also on the show as well. So we're super excited about that. It's that was at the cheesecake place. Yeah, and remember, we I brought the cheesecake into you guys. It was mm. so delicious. yummy. It was delicious. And they're going to be on the show today, as well as a lot more restaurants, of course, you don't want to miss. But I'm super excited. I'm going to see Max finish this bowl of 13 pounds. Challenge accepted. I'm going to take a nap <laughs> at my desk. Still got a lot more work to do today, but... Max's they, eyes are often bigger than I'm stomach. I'm so yeah. <laughs> hungry right now. You don't understand. He didn't we, eat breakfast just for this. I we Helder called me yesterday. And I was like, I'm not eating breakfast. I'm doing this. Oh big. no. Um, <laughs> but 15 seconds. Throw it to your own show. Give us a little preview. There you go. A new cheesecake shop, two noodle tree, and ramen spots. Of course, going to be on the show as well. You guys got to watch Texas Eats today, and it starts right after this.